Hey everyone, my name is Meredith Braza and I am a third year Doctor of Audiology student at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And with me today is Dr. Chantel Cannon, who graduated from UNC in 2017. She spent the last three years working as a research audiologist at Boys Town National Research Hospital and recently began in a PhD program at The Ohio State University. So thanks for joining me today, Dr. Cannon. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'm wondering if you can just describe your career path thus far. Yeah, so my career path thus far is it's been a little all over the place. Um, you know, you tend to think that you're going to figure out what you want to do and it's going to be straight and narrow. And mine's been, you know, a little topsy-turvy. So um, I wanted to go to med school originally and changed my ideas about halfway through undergrad and uh, got a bachelor's in linguistics because I really loved language and communication and um, what we do with that and how that breaks down. And so that put me on the course towards audiology. Um, and I wrote about when I was applying for grad school, how I found out about autoacoustic emissions and that your hair cells make their own sound and it blew my mind. And I was like, I'm going to be an audiologist. <laughs> So got into uh, school at UNC and it was my dream school. I was so excited about it. And I decided that I was going to be a pediatric audiologist and I was very adamant about it. And then that was not the way my life decided to go either. And I discovered that I actually have a strong affinity for the elderly population. So I worked really hard with that population and you know their hearing management, their hearing care, all of that. Graduated in 2017. I was so excited to be in the clinic and that didn't happen either. So I ended up um, working as a research audiologist at Boys Town for the past three years and I loved it actually. I didn't even know that research audiology uh, was a thing um, until I was able to do a T35 program halfway through my AUD and it ended up being just the right path for me. And so um, last year I was at a research conference because I had Boys Town gave me a lot of opportunities to be able to present my own research at different conferences um, and I was just inspired and just something you know that starts to develop really small and you kind of ignore it and then it gets bigger and bigger and kind of in the way and that's what basically research has been <laughs> for me this whole time and i was realized that like for me to try to make the impact that i want to in the elderly population that i needed to go back for my phd and so that's where i am now it's a great story and it's continuing for sure <laughs> uh so you talked about UNC being your dream school. How did UNC prepare you for your career? So I wanted to go to UNC. It was one of the top schools for audiology. I knew that they had so many resources available for their students and great clinic placements. And you know, when you do all that research and so I was very excited when I got accepted, I felt like the coursework was great. It was very involved, very in depth. Um, the clinic placements and the hands-on experience with the patients and all of our supervisors really gave you the chance to experience what you wanted as well as your um, academic and the faculty you came to them and you said you know what I'm interested in this or I'm interested in that how can you help me do this and they were more than willing to help and I feel like most of my cohort were very focused on being pediatric audiologist, so they got that experience. Whereas I was all over the place. I was like, you know what, what about industry? What about research? What about this? What about that? And they were like, we don't really know what to do with you, but it's okay, we'll put you <laughs> in these different places until you figure it out. And they really allowed me to not have boundaries, to not really be limited, to try a lot that really helped develop what I where I am now. That's great. and. You know, for current students in the program, do you have any advice for them? I definitely would say don't put yourself in a box. I know you come in and you think about, okay, this is what audiology means for me when you get there. But I would say don't limit yourself by that. You know, if you have a question about something, ask that question, read about it, talk to somebody, ask a faculty member or one of your clinic supervisors if they can put you in touch with somebody that does something with that clinic population that maybe you don't have experience with. Um, because you never know what your career path might be. You never know if 
you might be working with a different population than you thought you would. So definitely don't limit yourself. It's a good reminder to have as a, a current student. Um, so you're fresh in a PhD program, very exciting. So tell me about kind of your next steps now that you've entered that program. Yes, so um, my PhD is going to be in speech and hearing science and I'm hoping to focus and I'm planning to focus on what happens as we age in our vestibular and balance systems um, with my goal to try to help um, improve diagnostics for our um, elderly patients with vestibular losses, um, help with vestibular rehabilitation and just improve quality of life, which is very vague. <laughs> That's what, you know, what I want to do, how you get there. I'm not all the way sure yet, but I've got some really great advisors and people in my corner that are going to help with um, that experience. And so I currently have to follow my own advice of don't put myself in a box. And so for me right now, that means take classes that don't necessarily all the way mean only vestibular or only balance or something like that, but take classes that you never know what you might need them for. So currently I'm taking a class specifically on aging and it's teaching me and expanding my brain a whole lot and helping me be able to form these questions about how to help answer, answer the questions I have and help these other people. Um, but next steps in the PhD program, well, you know, mostly is to graduate, of course. <laughs> um, but I have to take some time and think about, you know, where do I see myself? And I don't know the answer to that question yet, but my advisors and the people in my corner let me know that I don't have to know that answer yet. And so that's another piece of advice I'd give to current students is that you don't have to know where you need to be right now because it'll happen. The right place will show up when it's the right time for you. Excellent. Well, I'm very happy for you. And as a program, we're excited to kind of see where you end up. Yes. Um, thanks for taking the time to chat today, Dr. Cannon. Absolutely.